So today we're going to talk about conditioning the unconscious, okay? And uh, and just just quickly, we, we all we all got to understand that you we cannot define what consciousness is, but uh, we can see some characteristics of it. Okay, and, and uh, at Magnetic Minds, we we characterize consciousness into three different, um, I guess, classifications. The first one is uh, self conscious. Okay, you might call this uh, ego. You know, you you might call this. Uh, the id, uh, uh, you, you might call it the thinking mind, but but it's a logical part of your brain. And we call it self-conscious. It's a part of you that has a name that that thinks and comes online at around about seven years old fully. And, and that's uh, we self-conscious. The way we mostly work with the self-conscious is through choices, is through choices. The self-conscious is choosing the best life, the ideal life. Uh, and and really thinks that it's in control of the the whole um, situation, the whole the whole structure. The second uh, way that we define consciousness is with uh, another part called the unconscious. We call it unconscious. It, you might hear this referred to as subconscious as well. You know, for me, when I was designing how I wanted to to call this aspect, I had one coach call it unconscious, another part, another coach call it subconscious, another trainer of mine. Uh, you know, called it identity. And so I, uh, w when looking at it all, I chose to use the word unconscious because it's a part of us. We don't seem to know uh, what it's, what it's, uh, what it's doing. And I felt that sub, if I use the word sub, that it would, it feels like it's below or less than when in truth it's, uh, it's clearly not. So the unconscious we're going to be working with today, the unconscious and the self-conscious have this eternal battle going on because the uh, the self-conscious wants a good life, wants quality of life, wants new, whereas the uh, the unconscious uh, just never wants to change. It wants to stay the same. It seeks survival. And there's this battle between these two. And for, for whatever reason, uh, we, we've been given this cosmic or we have to live through this cosmic joke where one part of us. Uh, you know, wants to go and do things different and new, and another part of us wants to keep everything the same. And has anyone ever felt this battle before, uh, where there's where there's this this part of you that just for some reason resists, is worried, has fear, and, and uh, this other part of you is uh, wanting to go for things and and uh, change and have a good life. So this this battle is is quite interesting. The unconscious was running the show, uh, you know, right up until the self-conscious comes online. And there's varying uh, research and, and studies about when we start actually logically thinking. So the unconscious is running the show right up until ages four and five, you know, 100% up until four and five. Self-conscious comes on and kind of takes over from about age seven. We have a third aspect of consciousness. And uh, this this third aspect is your super conscious, your higher intelligence, your connection to source, uh, this infinite knowledge, this 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 knowing, you know, that is far greater than we can really imagine. The part of us, you know, that that just understands how how things work here on this plane, uh, on in this uh, dimension. So so that's a super conscious, and we obviously connect back to the super conscious, make changes there, and bring it through. So uh, today I want to talk about conditioning the unconscious. Your unconscious has one goal, and that is it, it wants to keep things the same. And the reason why it wants to keep things the same is actually quite logical. Your unconscious wants to keep things the same because it knows it's already survived that. Okay, it knows it's already survived. And I had this quite excruciating, I guess, uh, experience where I kept on trying to change my life and doing more, but I kept on getting the same of what I've always had. In fact, the, the, there was this moment, and it was quite a while ago now, maybe a, maybe close to a decade ago. And at that time, I had three fitness studios or gyms. I had two hair salons. I had a digital marketing agency. I had uh, you know, a, a personal development business uh, and a bunch of other things. Like I just had so much on the go. At, oh, and I was traveling and speaking a lot. And uh, I come back from a, a talk in Singapore 
and I was tired and I got back and it was a Tuesday morning and I, I and you know I was just tired and I got back to challenges in, in the gyms and the hair salons and just and just everything was just going going you know wrong and the thing that was really tough was I got this big unexpected tax bill uh, I'd, uh, I didn't realize that in Australia, they expect you to pay your tax in advance. Uh, Aussies know this uh, it, it, probably. I didn't know. You know, you, you tell them how much you earned last year and they expect, you know, that you just paid in advance, even if you're not earning that. So I got this big unexpected tax bill. And I so I was tired and stressed. So I went for this walk. And and as I'm going on this walk, I, uh, I sit down, I want a peace and quiet. And I sit down on this bench and there's these, these these old older gentlemen who just they look homeless and uh you know it's a beautiful day and and uh, they're sort of chattering along and they have their fishing poles and and i'm sitting there and i think it was like maybe 10 or 11 a.m on a tuesday or something like that and 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 i start judging them like gosh they, what are they doing it's a tuesday why aren't they at work oh and and they sort of and it's like slow motion they walk and they stop right where i am sat on this bench and they and there was a little bridge there and they decide that's where they're going to go fishing. And I can't believe it. I just want like some peace and quiet. And, and I'm judging him and I'm, you know, look at these. And then basically to, to cut a long story short, I'm sitting there listening to them and they actually had more freedom than I did. You know, uh, here I was pretending that I was going for freedom, but instead of actually having freedom, all I was doing was getting more and more and more responsibilities. And, and these guys, they had what I wanted. I said that I wanted freedom. I even had a business called the Freedom Fast Track. I said I wanted freedom, but but I wasn't having any freedom at all. I was on a plane away from my family, uh, you know, nearly every single week. I think I spoke to spoke in 13 countries the year before that and over 100,000 people. And, you know, it was all, you know, it was all about uh, trying to get somewhere, but not actually ever having it. And I sat there and, and it was uh, it was a really important moment because I just decided that moment that, you know, that I actually wanted to enjoy and have the freedom rather than get another business, another business. Get, you know, who's ever been to that idea? We think that if we do something else, then we can get what it is we think we want. But actually, we realize we could already have it. And, and I see I see this reflection in people when they, you know, they're going to go to the gym and try to create this new body. Right. They say, I'm going to go. I'm going to eat all this, you know, this 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 food differently and I'm going to move differently. And, you know, my body's going to look different and then I'm going to feel so good. And I'm going to be, you know, like I'm going to be the hottest thing around, you know, or I'm going to I'm going to go and and uh, get this new relationship. And when I do, I'm going to finally feel love. or I'm going to get this new job with this new thing. And we and we. We just think, and but then we forget that we've been chasing that same thing for so long, never actually having it. And so I just made the decision. I said I wanted the freedom and success now, uh, and I'm and I don't want to continue to keep making myself more and more and more trapped. And, and so I decided right then that I would change everything. I sold. Uh, I got. I got out of the gyms. Uh, basically, lost money. Got out of all of them. Um, gave the hair salons to the managers. Uh, shut down one of my businesses and just like completely reorganized my life. And I made the decision back then that it was more important for me to be it now and realize I could have it now rather than live in this idea that I, there was something to keep on chasing and keep on chasing and keep on chasing. And, and humans really have this strange way of experiencing what we don't want, pretending to chase what we do want. Is it true? We have a very strange way of experiencing what we don't want and not experiencing what we do want. Just, uh, you know, so so actually I'll type that in for you guys because I think it's a very important, uh, you know, little statement. Uh, and here, let me just pop that in real quick. I'm just going to put that in the chat box here for you guys. Humans have a strange way of experiencing what we don't want and not experiencing what we do want. And so it's really interesting. And, and you've got to ask yourself, well, why does this happen? You know, why does this happen, right? Well, how, how and why do we do that, you know? Well, the, the truth is, is that your current reality is a direct reflection of your unconscious patterning, right? It is your, your unconscious programming. Whatever you're allowed to experience now is safe, is safe. Whatever you're allowed to experience. So, 
the level of love that you're allowed to experience for yourself is what's safe. Your level of success you're allowed to experience is safe. Your level of freedom you're allowed to experience is safe. Your, your level of abundance, right? That's what's allowed. Because if you actually take a step back, it, there isn't something you need to add to your life. You're actually able to feel it right now. In fact, those of us who have, many of us have gone and created new things, new jobs, new careers, new family, new house, new this, new, in the idea that once we had it, we would feel a different way. Know for sure that wherever we go, there we are, right? And it's not something else that we, we go for that will finally allow us to, to, to make the change. And what's fascinating is that when you allow yourself to have it now and feel the abundance in the present moment and feel the love for yourself, you're actually then allowed to experience it in more ways. Does that make sense? Like it, it, when you actually train your unconscious to be allowed to feel it now, then all those things that you want uh, to, to experience are allowed to happen. Because if you're unable to experience abundance, or if you're unable to feel love, or if you're unable to feel worth, and you tie the feeling of worth, abundance, or love to an external uh, you know, um, result, you will never be allowed to have that result because it's a direct conflict of what you're allowed to experience. Does that make sense? And then that's that's the key. And so, uh, you know, the topic of today is the feeling is the secret. The feeling is the secret because when you're allowed to be in the feeling right? When you're allowed to be in the feeling of it now, then you, your, your identity, your unconscious, and by the way, identity is a word I use for your self-conscious and unconscious together, is, is allowed to then just move and life becomes a game. Life becomes a game because you already have it all. You already can close your eyes or connect to the moment and feel more joy or love or abundance or gratitude than any external thing or relationship or, or, or award could ever give you. And when you arrive there, the, the, there is no such thing as a fear of failure because fear of failure it, it, it feels the same as if you just lose a card game, you know? If you're, you know, that's all it feels like. You, you, it feels like nothing other than losing a game. It doesn't have this big weight on it because there's no weight on the result. And, and when, you, when you access this and, and you already have it now, life's just a game. You just say, this is what I would like to create because, because that would be a fun game to play. Can I play this game? Can I do that? Can I, can I figure that out? And life is, is, is such a different, a different experience than what most have. And so what you must do is condition your unconscious, uh, you know, to have it now and to feel it now and to be it now and, and, and then go on these journeys and play these, these fun games. And so conditioning your unconscious is very important and it's best done daily and it's best done uh, in the morning. And your morning routine or morning ritual is a keystone habit. It's, it's literally the one thing that you can control, right? Like the one thing that you can control is you can, you can have 15 minutes to yourself to just step in, close your eyes and remind yourself of, of what and how you're going to be. Is that, is that true? Like it, you can control that no matter what. And then, you know, you, you, you get out there uh, in life and go out there and play a fun game, but, but you already have received everything that you could ever imagine. And, and so a little bit more about the unconscious it's such an incredible and fascinating part uh, of, of your mind. And, it's it, it is actually quite interesting that 
or quite confusing that in one system called a human, the the vast intelligence put uh, has created it so we have such a conflict between the unconscious and then this other part of us, the self. Like it's quite perplexing, you know. Uh, this the self conscious that wants life to be great, you know, and has dreams and visions, you know, is very different to how you you know that the animals are on the savanna. You know, you ne you never see an antelope with a day planner. You know, you, you you don't see a crocodile with a vision board, and that's because uh, you know they only have this one aspect of them, which is that they seek survival, and so they don't have this big conflict or this big worry. You know the the, the lioness isn't worried about whether or not, uh, you know, she's feeding her cubs, uh, you know, or, organic buffalo. She just goes, kills the buffalo, you know, there's no better or worse. It's just, it, it just is, you just, it's just survival. And that, that's, that's what they're there focused on. Yet uh, for us, we still have that part of us, but some, this front part of our brain grew this frontal lobe grew, and as it grew, uh, this executive function and this idea, uh, you know, this temporal lobe and understanding time and that life can be better and it can be worse and, and morals and all these stories, uh, you know, you know, get, get put in there. And so the, the unconscious is there and it's very important, okay? It's very important that we, we must not make the unconscious that is based in fear the enemy. You know, uh, in A Course in Miracles, uh, you know, they say there is only love and there is fear. But but there's this under underlying, you know, premise that that fear is bad. And it, it, it's simply not. It's a ridiculous assumption because, uh, you know, fear is needed. If, um, you know, down at the golf course, there's these uh, they, there's these uh, these swans and, and, and other wildlife and they are innately scared of humans. And that's why they've survived. They they run away. And so we do have these these fears, and it's important to have this part of us. And uh, you know, I've got a good story of actually uh, of Eddie the antelope, uh, who you know had a little bit of the challenge that many of us had. And so I'll tell you a little bit about Eddie. So 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 archaeological dig happened uh, in Africa, and they come across this ancient diary, and it was it was Eddie the antelope. And, you know, so Eddie is writing in, a, in his diary and the diary kind of was the same. It was quite boring. Wake up, found, you know, found some great uh, trees to, to, you know, to, to eat and some leaves. And we, you know, we ran away from, from uh, the lions today and, you know, and, and, uh, oh, I really like the look of that, that other, uh, you know, antelope there. And then, that, but then, you know, this continues, basically it's about reproduction and it's about eating and survival. And then, you know, after a while, Eddie starts putting different thoughts in his diary. So I say, you know, I really, I feel, you know, like life could be better. I want to connect to love. And there's all these animals out there that I want to connect with and I want to love. And so eventually he works up the courage and he says, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go down to the watering hole tomorrow. And tomorrow, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to connect with uh, Charles the crocodile and, you know, Tim the tiger. I'm going to I'm going to make sure that, you know, me and Sally, the snake, we, you know, we eye to eye, we sit and we break bread together. And, and I, I want to connect with with all of these uh, these friends of mine, because, you know, that that seems seems really important. And uh, it's just so right. So tomorrow, you know, I'm going to go with love. I'm going to open my heart. I'm going to go down and, and you know, I'm going to connect and anyway, that was the, the last diary entry for Eddie. So you got to have this unconscious that that goes, OK, this is what survival is. You know, this is what survival is. And so it's quite it's quite important that we realize that, that that the unconscious is doing a good job and it will go for whatever it believes will ensure that you survive. It will ensure that whatever whatever you will survive it wants more of. If your goal threatens survival, 
your unconscious will not allow you to have it. If the goal threatens survival, your unconscious will not allow you to have it. And that sounds crazy. Of course, my goal doesn't threaten survival. Well, survival stands for safety and belonging. So if your goal threatens safety or belonging, your unconscious won't have it. So what does that mean? It means if your goal is different to what you experience in your tribe between ages zero and four, it won't allow it, which is crazy. So instead of being allowed to feel abundance, we find somebody like me who continually kept on adding another business and another business so that he was working hard and really busy and striving for something else, but never allowed to have it because to have it would be in direct conflict of what is how his family experienced life. And so it was a, it's deemed unsafe, unsurvivable, but mainly it's just not being tested. Does that make sense, everybody? And, and so this is the reason why, you know, most of us uh, are not allowed to have the, the end results that we go for. That's why, that's why we can't have it is because our unconscious just says, no, we're, that uh, abundance doesn't seem survivable. For generations, we've lived in scarcity. You know, happiness, I don't know if we can survive that. And, and so we don't allow it. Our unconscious just doesn't allow it. And he, how does it not allow it? It throws feelings of uh you, you, you know, worry and, and, and fear that comes up with stories. You know, the main story, I don't even know if I want that very much anymore. It's one of the most amazing stories that I hear in MagMind. Someone will have a choice for literally a year. They'll get to, you know, in momentum and all of a sudden they don't want it. They will put other agendas to be more important. You know, oh, I'm going for this year, but now my someone in my family is sick or I've got a sore stomach or I've got this health condition. Something will turn up which stops them having it. And, uh, and, and we get enrolled by our unconscious, and our unconscious figures out a way to make sure that we just don't get it. Right? It, we just make sure we don't get it. So what we must do is we must teach the unconscious that it's safe. What's brilliant about uh, the unconscious is it, it doesn't actually have a way to sense the world. It uses uh, different parts of us, our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our nose, touch to sense the world. The unconscious doesn't sense the world. These are the inputs. Lucky for us, we can close our eyes and we can use the, the function of our mind to create a different input. So for example, rather than having to go out into the world and, and find a new tribe of monkeys that, that live in abundance or freedom and, and sit with them and experience that it's safe, we can close our eyes and create that experience in our mind, therefore updating and teaching our unconscious that it is survivable. Our unconscious doesn't know the difference between whether we actually you know, brought that information in from reality or whether we, we created it in our mind. Uh, does that make sense? And so you can, and we will go through it today, uh, you know, what it is you must do to, to update your unconscious and to condition it so that when you choose your result, there is no resistance to it. There is no resistance. We, you know, this idea that we have to struggle and fight for, uh, for our goals is, isn't true. The, the only thing we need to need to realize is is that when we're creating it in the world there'll be things we have to overcome and and uh challenge and conflict but we don't need to fight ourselves we should just be able to go for it we should just be able to go for it you should be able to say I, i'm gonna go write a book or start a business or 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 say i love you or say let's get married or say i want a divorce or i want to live here or or i want to do this you just go for it there doesn't need to be any other it's like that's the game i want to go play and so what we do is we we make sure that every day we, we are conditioning the unconscious so that it experiences what we want is already existing 
because if it's already existing, we've already survived it. And if we've already survived it, well, then guess what? It's survivable. <laughs> and if it's survivable, the unconscious allows you to have more of it. And we don't have to keep playing out that, uh, that, that cosmic joke. So uh, the thing with the unconscious is that everything is a suggestion. Okay, and, and just everything is a suggestion. Your unconscious doesn't just turn on and off. So let's say you do one meditation in the morning. The unconscious goes, wow, cool, we just survived that. But it doesn't stop. Does that make sense? It's not like it just disappears and forgets the rest of your day. So everything is a suggestion. Mm. And the unconscious is always wanting to know what is survivable and looking for suggestion. What is survival? What is survival? What is survival? And so action, that what the action you take is a suggestion, but inaction is also a suggestion. Going to do a recode is a suggestion, but needing to do 100 recodes every day because you're that broken is also a suggestion. And, and so we must realize that we're always giving the suggestion to the unconscious. And so the way that we, we train the unconscious is very important, okay? Every time you have an intention and then you fulfill that intention, your unconscious takes that as a suggestion. So this is why I suggest that most of personal development is broken. And the reason why most of personal development is broken is that the people walking in to the conference, to the healing, to the coaching, buying the book, as they go to it, their intention is that they need something to fix them. And that becomes the suggestion to the unconscious. And so does that, does that make sense? So they walk into an amazing seminar. And so I think all of us agree that Joe Dispenza has amazing seminars. I think they're phenomenal. But, it, but if someone walks to that seminar, this is going to fix me. This is going to heal me. This is going to change me. This is going to, the suggestion to the unconscious is, is powerful. And the unconscious is learning that it's safe to have something else fix me, right? Very important, very important to understand everything is a suggestion. So what we want is we want to make sure that we're giving good suggestions to our unconscious. And here's, here's, a, here's an idea. The, the first suggestion you want to give to your unconscious is that you're living a life you love. A second really good suggestion that you're giving to your unconscious is you have a healthy body. You're clearly got breath in your lungs and, uh, you know, blood pumping through your veins, right? Here's a really good suggestion that you're the predominant creative force in your life. Here's another really good suggestion, is that you're living your true nature and purpose. And so the reason why we have these core four um, choices is that if you actually look at the wisdom in those four choices, they create the foundation of training your unconscious to have it all now. And that is why they're so crucial, because everything is suggestion. And so if you're wanting to really build a magnetic mind, if you're really wanting to have life be a fun game, these core four choices that we do are, you guys have heard of the 80-20 rule, right? And it's like 20% of the stuff you do creates 80% of the results. Well, the core four 
are like the the 80 20 of the 80 20 you know they are that important and, and uh, as long as you're living those then the other choices are just fun games right because consider this if you're already living a life you love is there any reason why you can't love your life right now and and live a life you love and if you're not is there anything that else that's more important than shifting things to get that working, right? And shifting it to realize that, yeah, you know, you might have a job uh, that you don't like, but you can like it, right? Like, that's so important. Second, it is so, I mean, so let's say you're, you're choosing to love your life, however it is. Second, you're, you're choosing to, to be grateful for the vehicle and the body that you have and that it is healthy. To some extent, it is healthy, right? And you're experiencing the health that's there. We're so focused on, on the health that isn't there. For goodness sake, we've, we're all, you know, we're all, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, we all, to some extent, are unhealthy, right? But we, we're suggesting and focusing on the fact that, you know what, there's lots of, us, lots of parts of us that is healthy. The, the predominant or primary creative force actually allowing ourselves to acknowledge that we are that and then finally to live our truest nature and purpose. And so my suggestion to you is that every day you have a morning routine and a morning ritual that consists of what we're about to do today, right now. Once you do these, you can then do the wisdom process on some of your other choices, everything else. So I want to take you through what I do, you know, I was going to say the word religiously every morning, but what I mean is I never miss this. I never miss this. I start my day and I never let myself have a day that I'm not living um, my core four choices ever. Like I just, I just don't. It's just, this is, this is how I choose to be. I, I choose to do these. So I'll take you through what I do. And I'll, and I'll I'll guide you with the questions. And all of us have these choices, okay? So uh, does that sound good? Sweet. Your focus does create reality. All right. So the first one that we'll start with. This is how this is how I do it. Uh, is we'll start with um, loving your life. So what I do is I, I grab a pen and I write down, you know, uh, I choose the end result of a life I love. And I always write it like that. So mine always says L-I-L, life I love. So you might you might write it choosing um, to to live a life you love, or choose to have a life you love, or choose to be in love with the life. <laughs> Come on, then. My wife just turned up at the office with our dog. Why is she here? You better be careful. Just a straight <laughs> family photo. Uh, um. That's the mascot, by the way, for um, Duncan Publishing. That's that's if that's her. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of a funny moment, isn't it? I, you know, we we just love our life, you know, and choose to have it the, the way that that we choose it. And if that means that that a dog comes to the office, then that's what's happening today. <laughs> All right, so choose the end result of a life I love. Okay, cool. So, so when I make this choice, I set the intention, okay? <laughs> hey, Bree. I didn't think I'd get, get, a, uh, get away from you putting a comment in. Oh, there's, there's tons of comments. Okay. So... So when you're ready, uh, just close your eyes and step into this choice. I choose the end result of a life I love. And, and, uh, and just ask an open-ended question uh, as you step into it. Is, what is it that I love about my life? What could I create today 
that would make me fall in love with my life even more? How would it feel to be completely in love with my life? And just make this choice. I choose the end result uh, of, a, of a life I love. What else, what else could you do, create, or feel to love your life even more? And just allow yourself to truly step into the end result of how good does it feel to have a life you love. just really just just sit in this just sit in this feeling i choose the end result of a life i love and and i choose to love it now i choose to love it today i choose to love it Very good. When you really open your eyes, report back. How does it feel to make that choice? How is it? Mm. Is there anything that you, you know, need to change uh, to love your life even more? And, and by change, it doesn't mean anything on the outside. It's, it's you know, what is it that, that you might shift internally about how you think about things? And so that's the first thing is you just choose that you're going to love it today. You're just going to love it. And you just every morning you make that choice that you're going to love it, you know, because right now is the youngest you're ever going to be, you know, and this is this is what you've you've got to experience. And uh, there's challenges, and there's things that are working, and things that you'd like to change. But you know, you get to enjoy doing all of that. And this is just so crucial that we uh, we step into this, you know, and that we're not out there trying to get something to change something to blah blah blah. That we. We truly allow ourselves, uh, you know, to do this. And this is how we become the magnet. This is how uh, we become the magnet. Okay, so let's do the, the next one. Let's do the next one. You know, one of the biggest lies that we we tell ourselves is that there is something more important than loving our life. You know, like it's a real big deceit, like making money is more important than loving my life. What? What will you do with the money? You know, uh, looking after everyone else is more important than loving my life. You, you know, but then they have to look after you when you get sad and depressed because you didn't love your life or, you know, we, we, does that make sense? I mean, we, 
we, we spend a lot of time thinking that there's something else that's more important than this. You know, and, and by the way, if you truly do love just caring and serving others, well, then you do love it, right? Right. That's the key. You do. You do love it. So you're loving it. You're not you're not in resentment or doing it to get payback later. You're actually just saying, well, I love to do this and it feels great. Just get that distinction. Right. And so very important that we just go, you know what? I love this for it. Not to get somewhere, not to get paid something, not to not to get just because I love this. I love doing this. Very important. And, and, you know, part of loving our life is, you know, we need to hit our base uh, needs. So, so we do, you know, we do need to have, you know, the, the, you know, the, the base needs. So we do need to do that because that's what part of loving our life. Okay. The next, uh, someone's typed in, if you love your life, everything else will fall in place. Well, no, loving your life is everything. Do you see that? So someone's, someone typed in, if you love your life, then everything else will fall in place. Well, well not really, because loving your life is the thing. Okay, see, you see the point? Is This is why it's so important. Okay, so, so the next one is uh, we'll get into a predominant creative force. Okay, now predominant, predominant, primary, main creative force. And so this is this is a big one. Now, in order for you to know what the predominant creative force is, let's talk about what it's what the opposite of it is. The opposite of this is when something else is the dominant force in your life. Think about that. So if something else, what could it, what could be? Where do you see other people letting something else be the dominant force in their life, letting the, you know, about it? So many people will give the power to something else and say, that is making me feel this way. Government, body, food, sickness, um, friendships, spouse, children, obligation or, you know something else you see and so they're saying that makes me feel this and that's when that that's not the predominant or primary creative force primary creative force goes yes that exists and this is how i'm choosing to feel this is how i'm choosing to be this is how i am that's what this choice is about so when you're uh, when you're ready, just 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 go through the second choice with me. Go ahead and uh, and close your eyes and just take a few breaths and just connect to the moment. As you do, make the choice. So so make the choice. I choose the end result of being the predominant creative force. Feel what it's like to really be the primary creative force, the one that's making the choices. Accept it as truth and build a full sensory experience of living it. How does it feel to, to always be the one choosing your response, choosing how you feel? That's it. What are all the possible ways that you have this right now? Notice what comes to you and feel it even more. What could you create? What would you love to create? to be the predominant creative force even more? Where in your life do, are you giving power away and you need to return to your own power? Where can you create this even more? And just sit in this choice. I am the predominant creative force in my life. I'm in control of my thoughts and my feelings my decisions. I'm the predominant creative force. I'm, I'm in control of my responses. And just feel that feeling of letting go of all this victim mentality that, that surrounds us. 
How would you choose to feel in each and every situation? How will you choose to be? And just choose it. This, make the decision. This is how you choose to be. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Awesome. And, and so very nice um, comments coming in. Thank you. I see them. Thanks, um, Suzanne and Sujata and D-Rock and others. So very, very, um, very important, this choice. Society is so used to teaching us to, to let everything else control how we feel. You know, we feel we should be outraged and annoyed and, you know, and give the power away rather than realizing we allowed to choose how we want to be. Yeah. Very good. Very good. All right. So there's two more. So when you do this, you're, you're teaching your unconscious just that you are. And so you are this now. So, so the first two of, that we've done are very, very good. You are this and you know, you're not, all, you're not a hundred percent this and so as you go out today you're intending to love your life but you might be honest with yourself and say at the moment i'm loving my life at like 70 percent it's like well oh, that's okay that's a lot i want to really love it how can i love it even more and this starts building that foundation say so i i'm going to be the predominant creative force maybe right now look i'm giving my power away to you know, to bills or to staff or to colleagues. And, and today I'm going to set the intention of that even though they're going to be them and do their things in their way, I'm going to be the predominant creator of how I will think and how I will feel and how I will be. And because everything is a suggestion. The third uh, one that we'll do is uh, we'll do uh, health and vitality. Huh? Health and vitality. And so, so when you're ready, go ahead and, and close your eyes and just, just make, make a nice, nice connection to yourself. And as you do, take a few breaths and make the choice. You know, I choose uh, to have a healthy and vital body. I choose this. This is, this is a choice. I'm choosing health and vitality. And just make the choice and just sit in that choice. Take a few breaths, connect to your heart, and just make that choice. I, I choose a healthy and vital body. And as you make the choice, accept it as, as truth. Feel what it feels like to have this now. Feel what it feels like to have this now. I choose health and vitality. Feel what it feels like to have this now. Notice where you already have health and vitality. Make this choice. I choose to feel health and vitality. What are all the possible ways that you have this right now? What are all the possible ways you have this now? Beating heart, blood, blood flowing through the, your veins, a clear mind, thinking, you know, whatever it is you have, you have how, what are all the, just connect with all the possible ways you already have a healthy and vital body. Mm. just feel that feeling notice what comes to you and feel it so what would you love to create to feel this even more And just notice that. Notice how you already have it. What would you love to create to feel this even more? What would you want to do with this healthy and vital body? Who would you want to do it with? Where would you like to be? What would you like to experience and feel? And when you're ready, open your eyes and come on back. 
How did that feel? And so it is so, so good to realize we can access all of this right now. And so what I'm doing is, uh, and just let me know in the chat box, how's everyone going, by the way? Hope you're going good. I'm using uh, the little script uh, that you guys learn uh, at the, the immersions, okay? And um, I'm just pulling this script up here. Uh, it's on day two of the immersions, okay? And it's the emotion of the end result. And I'm just using this script. And, and this is all I've been going through. And all of you have access um, to this script. It's also at the top of, of your lenses sheets when you learn to do lenses. But it is the number one suggestion that I suggest that you do every single morning uh, that steps you into having it now and having more of this base foundation, okay? And so you'll see here, it says, start with the first choice, you know, uh, I choose a life I love. Allow yourself to fully experience that being true and teach your body how it will be in your new reality. So what we first do is we just close our eyes, connect to our heart, feel the moment, okay? Then we choose the end result and feel what it's like to have that now. We accept it as truth and build a full sensory experience of, of living it. We ask an open-ended question. What are all the possible uh, ways that you have this? Notice what comes to you, feel it even more. And then ask another open-ended question and feel it. Open your eyes. Dixie just reminded me that her and Rochelle do this on the lenses call uh, each week too, but I wanted, I felt called to take you um, through this today. Okay. Because it's, it's, it's the foundation and it doesn't take long. You go through all the other orientational choices, three minutes per choice. So we'll finish off with the last one, uh, true nature and purpose. Okay. And so true nature and purpose is, uh, is from Robert Fritz. It's a very nice choice. And uh, your, your truest nature is to be a creator. Truest nature is to be a creator. Uh, and that is, that is obvious that, that humans are to, here to create, to go on new adventures, to, to create meaning and purpose and education and, and businesses and technology. We're here to create. We're here to tune into this creative consciousness and bring it into reality. We're here to be a creator. And then our purpose is how we're applying that creativity. Is it to create a happy and healthy home? Is it to be a, create a great relationship or uh, a great family? What are we applying it to? Okay, so true nature is that you feel that feeling of, of imagination and creativity and purpose is how you are currently applying that, that purpose. So I'll take you through the script. Uh, when you're ready, go ahead and close your eyes. Connect to your heart and feel the moment. Take a breath and as you do, choose the end result of living your true nature and purpose. Choose that. Feel what it would feel like to be living as a creator and, and applying that purposefully. Just really feel that. Accept it as truth that you are living as a, a, your true nature and purpose and build a full sensory experience of how it would feel to live your true nature and purpose. What are all the possible ways that you have this now? What are all the possible ways that you are uh, doing this already? Notice what comes to you and just feel it.
What would you love to create to feel this even more? All right, open your eyes, come back to the session. Awesome. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. So I wanted to take the time today to really uh, build up your belief of how important it is to have your unconscious living uh, in a place that it is safe to have a life you love that it is safe to be the predominant creator, that it is safe to have a healthy and vital body, and that it is safe to have a purpose and, and to, to experience your true nature. You, you must get this point that the core four are there to teach your unconscious that it's safe. Because once it's safe and you already are loving your life now, well, then you're allowed more of the things that you would love. If you already have health and vitality and it's safe to have that, well, then you're allowed more of it. If you're allowed more, uh, if you're allowed to have to be the predominant creator and to live your true nature, then you're allowed more of it. Then you're allowed more of it. This is the key is once you're allowed it now, then you're allowed more of it. And that's why the script is so important. Uh -huh.